There Terry it is. Francona. Look at the red cheeks. There's a lot of emotion. That's a guy that's about ready. He needs a handkerchief and a Kleenex. <laughs> Tristan McKenzie in front of him. Look at him. Yeah, a future Hall of Famer. He led this club to six trips to the postseason. Won the AL pennant in 2016. One of the finest. I played with him in Milwaukee. We were teammates in Milwaukee. He's a first baseman, right? Yes. Left-handed bat, yes. left-handed glove. Until he blew out his knee. He was a star coming out of college at the University of Arizona. I mean, this guy was a legit superstar player. Wasn't the same player after he blew his knee out, but I tell you, he's another guy. I play with him. I would have never in a million years thought that he was going to be a manager down the road. He was just the life of the team, funny guy. You know, he just, he kept every room light. But you did look at him as this, like, eccentric thinking kind of guy that was going to be a manager. Look at the look at love this. for him. Look at the That's... love for this man. Managing for the last time in Cleveland. His managerial career will come to an end. Terry Francona. You know what I like? The reaction from the player. Yeah, that says it all, right? You know, it, the way he was shaking everybody's hands, I get goosebumps just thinking about it because I played for him. But look at this. You think you think these players don't don't like to fight for this guy? He's a father figure. And that's what he is. Look at him. He's like telling his telling his sons, come on, pack up your stuff. We're gonna go get ice cream. Let's go. Right? Doesn't that look like that? Yeah, man. Yeah, he uh, he deflects a lot of negativity uh, about his players to himself. Uh, they don't come any better than this. And, and Greg, the other night you were dead on. He is on a one-way ticket to Cooperstown. Oh, yeah. He's in. And what a celebration that will be. Oh, I, I can't wait to, for me, to be for there. For me, is the, the the consistency. Like with Tito, you know, you knew what you were gonna get with Tito. Like if, uh, in April, you were gonna get Tito Francona. In August, the dog days, you were gonna get Tito Francona. And when it mattered most in the postseason, you were gonna get the same Tito. That that for me says it all on, on when you look at one of these great managers in our game, and and he's definitely one of those. Let's hear from the great Terry Francona. I mean, once you give out T-shirts, man, you can't be going back. <laughs> That's not good. You know, I think it's like not, it's like the worst kept secret ever. But I think it's respectful to them to tell them. And I just wanted to thank them because I told them in spring training, it's an honor for me to stand up in front of them and go through not just the good but the difficult. And I wanted everybody in that room to know today that I felt like it was an honor of a lifetime to be here for 11 years. The managerial position has morphed into something completely different than when Terry Francona started managing. He started his career as a manager of the Phillies, then he went to the Red Sox, and then ending his career with the Cleveland Guardians. I think that we need to recognize how important leadership is, not just adhering to philosophies from upper management. Yes, collaboration is essential. No, no question about that. But like you saw in Jose Ramirez's face, the superstar of your team is looking with love mm -hmm. at this man mm -hmm. that he's grinded with for years. That is insanely important in a marathon sport like this. In the NFL, yeah, it's 17 games. I get it's a grind, but this is every night you're going to war, and that's your leader in the dugout. And if you think anybody can just do that, you're wrong. And I think what you saw in Terry Francona for his entire career was he got guys to love playing for him. And you know that better than anyone you played for. His door was never closed. But the one thing now, just, just trying to think about how it was with Tito, you never saw the GM there. You never saw the president or the owners there in the clubhouse. It, 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 was, it was incredible. Everything filtered through Tito. And, and I thought he touched every player that was on that roster differently. I mean, the way he treated Lindor or the way he got Lindor going was totally different than the way he got Michael Brantley going. So I felt like he had such a good vibe of the clubhouse. Everybody that was that was it, from the from from the Bat Boys to to the the, the the fans that he would see every day, the, the guys, the people that would have season tickets. He touched them in, in, in a different way than he touched me. But what I really admired from him is the consistency. There was no zero filter. What he told you in spring training was basically going to happen throughout the year. I remember him in spring training he says, "Hey, I want you to get 600 at bats." That's what I want. You're going to be in the lineup every day. As a matter of fact, don't even look at the lineup. If you're not going to play that day, 
I'll let you know the day before. Or Millsy, the bench coach, will let you know. And that's exactly how it was. It was just unbelievable the way he went out his business. And, and by the way, everybody just really cared about him from the training staff all the way to the top. We need more Terry Francona's in that yeah, role. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I think the key to guys like Terry Francona, Jim Leland, guys, Tony La Russa, guys that passed the test of time, right? And they done it, did it for a long time. Guys like Terry Francona and Jim Leland, you know what they do? They make the 25th and 26th guy on that roster feel important. And those guys can get lost. The 7th and 8th guy in that bullpen, they can come in and get two innings or three innings in relief to keep the bullpen fresh that a guy like Terry Francona would walk up to a guy like Greg Amson and go like, hey, thanks for saving the bullpen tonight. And then he would take care of you and give you a couple days off. And so what happens, you start to have trust in him. And the biggest, the biggest thing, if you talk to any manager, he wants to be able to trust his players. But it's a two-way street. And if you trust that guy that's running it, it goes both ways. He was not handed a star-studded oh, roster. We thought he was crazy Cleveland. after leaving Boston. Like, and, why would you go there? And he got the most out of whatever yeah. roster he was given. And he will be in Cooperstown someday.